coming a bit under pressure. Is it just nervousness around elections or is there some shift in the fundamentals that you see? I mean, let's uh, see it that way. I don't think investors are, are afraid. It's just that maybe, as uh, I was hearing, taken hold a little bit on the stock market. If we want to think as an investor right now, if I want to invest in treasury yields uh, for 10 years, for example, it's giving me a yield of 4.2%. While if I want to check with this high valuation of indices, S&P 500, for example, it's at 3.8. So why would I join now or invest in the stock market while I have a less risky market that's even giving me a better return? So I think that's also something to take into consideration. Yes, the volatility is spiking. I'm seeing the first time as well, this huge amount of long uh, of hedge funds on the VIX index. So all of this together, yes, we're taking some consolidation, uh, consolidation around the uh, elections, but the same thing is also uh, when I want to compare markets, uh, the stock market with less risky, whether it's a safe haven such as gold, or it's the bond market, both of which are giving me really good returns, which making me maybe a little bit hold on the stock market for the meantime. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, one would have to agree with that, uh, Farah. The surge that we're seeing in bond yields, that's definitely not a very good environment for equities. Uh, but do you see these bond yields go up higher in fear of a Trump win in particular? Are the markets primed for a Trump victory, you'd say? I mean... Uh, uh, I highly doubt maybe there will be a little bit of volatility around the election and post-elections, but I genuinely think at the moment that whoever wins, they have very limited room to create really very different policies, especially in the first quarter. So I highly doubt there will be huge changes. Actually, I think, yes, the dollar might be supported, the yields might be supported, but maybe for different reasons. Given that the U.S. has stronger fundamentals than other, uh, I would say, developed uh, economies, such as the Eurozone, such as uh, the U.K., that's mainly why I am betting more on the U.S. Treasury yields, uh, more than who's going to win the election. Do you uh, buy into this? I was asking Farah, Ajay, about uh, the possibility of a Trump presidency now, because uh, if you recall uh, that presidency that he's had in the past has seen one of the biggest bear markets in the small cap and mid cap stocks. And that happened specifically, if I remember correctly, Ajay, from January 2018 to March 2020. So I was wondering if that uh, fear is growing in Indian markets as well right now. Uh, no, uh, you know, in fact, the Trump presidency will be mildly more positive uh, for India. There is talk of tariffs. Uh, but again, the rhetoric uh, during the election season and the actual action uh, sees a very big uh, comparison. Uh, there's a very big difference on how politicians act when they are actually in power. Uh, so those 60% tariffs and all are not going to happen because that will lead to such a huge inflation in the U.S. domestic economy itself that no politician uh, can survive that. So uh, this is more rhetoric. Uh, India, I think, is well served by a Republican president. The Wall Street positioning is for a Trump victory. Uh, the Indian uh, maestros who have been coming uh, even on your channel, uh, Vikram, uh, through the day are more or less uh, factoring in a Trump uh, victory or uh, at least a Republican uh, control of uh, the Congress and the Senate, uh, which will again uh, you know, inhibit uh, Kamala even if uh, she wins uh, uh, the election. So uh, overall, uh, Trump uh, is good uh, for the Indian uh, economy, uh, it will be better than a Democrat uh, president, uh, that is for sure. Uh, the second part is uh, what has happened uh, post the September rate cut by the Fed, uh, the dollar strengthening, the yields going up, has upended EM flows. On top of that, you had the Chinese stimulus and the China uh, Politburo meets again, Vikram. So yes. we are expecting uh, some more fireworks on stimulus. In over the last 10 days, Chinese market has seen outflows, actually. Yes. Uh, so the first $53 billion that came in on the first two weeks of hope has seen about 6 to $7 billion coming out now uh, because the uh, stimulus is seen as not good enough. I'll give you just... Uh, two examples. 36% yes. 
of the local government uh, revenues come from land sales. Those have dried up totally for the last one and a half years. Yeah, 70% yeah. of Chinese household wealth is sitting in property, which is yielding about minus 15, minus 20%, if you can sell at all. 124 million, uh, uh, 1.24 million units are sitting there, which have been paid for by mortgages, but uh, which have not commenced, uh, you know, development. Right. So it's a sixty trillion dollar market which is in trouble. The Chinese real estate, right. very highly uh, overvalued. So you think the it's stimulus not, is not going to help as much as uh, the Chinese would hope, uh, right? Yes. But in you know, that, even while we're talking, yes, back in a rush. Yeah. yes, but even while we're talking about the Fed cutting rates for us. Uh, the ECB is cutting rates as well, and we're talking about China. It's sort of trying to stimulate its economy, and like Ajay says, perhaps not making too much inroads when it comes to real estate, which is a big part of its uh, economy. It'll take much more than what they've already done. Do you think? But these are precursors, at least what is happening on interest rates, what's happening uh, by way of stimulus in the Chinese economy. They are precursors to uh, the global economy clawing back in its recovery because that is linked to how Indian equities will react as well, right? Uh, with the kind of exports that uh, we hope from IT services, etc. I mean, it's it, not, no, I, I would explain it a little bit differently. Um, yes, definitely growth will help everyone. But then if, let's say, Trump is uh, the winner, and then I think on an international scale, maybe the China would be more afraid of tariffs and new regulations. And this also will be helping uh, the Indian economy. So I don't really think it's related, whatever is happening in China and internationally with India. I still bet on, yes, international growth would help uh, the Indian economy. It is a very good competitor for China as products, as exports, and probably better relationship with the U.S., uh, compared to China. So overall, I think this would keep me bullish on the Indian economy. Now for China, also, whatever happened before last September was a little bit shy because the Chinese government had this dilemma. Should I support the yuan or should I support the economy? And they really had very small room to react. Now, given this huge movement, over 70% of central banks around the globe, they are dropping their interest rate and especially the Federal Bank. Correct. Now they have more room for more liquidity to be injected. I think the last uh, maybe measures that came last Thursday, Thursday wasn't really that uh, promising for yes. investors. The fiscal plans weren't really clear, but still there's sectors that I can still bet on China because of how cheap it is right now. Uh, tech stock, for example, online shopping, uh, electric yes. cars, with this new BRICS movement, I think still there's very interesting sectors in China. So you're saying the... Chinese markets are still looking attractive, notwithstanding uh, what uh, Ajay is saying, that uh, perhaps the stimulus is not going to be enough and the sparkle that uh, the Chinese markets hold, at least as of now, because this entire credo which has come about, about uh, sell India and buy China, perhaps may not uh, hold true for a longer term. But Ajay, you were talking about uh, market veterans being on our channel. Madhusudan Kela was uh, here with us as well, and he said that right now, return off capital is the first priority. Return on capital is the second priority. He says that if you are intoxicated, believing that the bull market is going on and you can do anything, he says that phase is over. Do you agree with that? You know, very difficult uh, to say that. But, you know, on the other side, Morgan Stanley has brought out an interesting report, Vikram, on how the ROEs have gone up. The companies have really cleaned up uh, their balance sheets. There's a lot of embedded operating leverage uh, sitting in Indian companies. That's why you get the 20 times price earning and China was at nine times. Now it's gone up to about 11 times after uh, the recent surge. Uh, so uh, I would more uh, be uh, happy with that uh, return on equity. Uh, our overall market is sitting at 16% uh, uh, plus return on equity. So uh, there is a move to quality, to large caps, uh, you know, and there was frothiness in small cap, mid cap. It is getting corrected out, but still at uh, 25 times price earning, there is some uh, way to go uh, in those pockets. Uh, but return of capital is an asset allocation business. See, when you get into equities, you get in for five years, 10 years. As a trader, uh, there are no bets. 
you know, uh, whether you will get return uh, of capital. But on a five, 10 year basis, uh, you are very much assured that uh, five to six years in India, you double your money. And in about 11, 12 years, you will quadruple very easily. And if you uh, had good portfolio picking skills, or if your fund manager was doing well, you could uh, even, uh, uh, you know, do better. Uh, so uh, we have seen that, in fact, over the last six years from, if you say, 2018 uh, to now, there are a lot of funds in India we are, which are up three to four times, Vikram. Five years are we have given... On, I'm, about, I was just saying that about financials, for example, if you just take that sector, it has been holding up. Uh, but can you expect that uh, to continue once the RBI kicks off its uh, rate cut cycle, for example? Because... There are certain pockets that uh, will hold up and certain pockets which will lag. Uh, just wondering where financials fits in, which has been performing in recent times. I think the correction that has happened and the ferocious selling uh, by the FIs, you know, about uh, uh, five days back, they had sold 23,000 crores of uh, financials already in the first uh, two weeks of uh, October. Uh, that would have gone up further. And today, especially the way Bank Nifty fell, uh, our Nifty Finance fell. I think a lot of selling would have happened. So FIs were overweight uh, on financials, and we have seen furious selling happening in October. Uh, so maybe uh, as markets are forward discounting mechanisms, we have discounted that, okay, RBI will not cut in December as we thought earlier. Maybe they'll cut in February or April, but the cut is coming. NIMs tend to compress as the rate cuts come in because uh, your loans, uh, your repricing uh, takes time. The deposits are running. They are locked in at uh, higher rates. And uh, banks have been really uh, in a competitive bidding war for deposits. So yes. NIMs will co uh, compress and some margin erosion comes in, uh, Vikram, with the but, rate But, you cuts. know, we were talking but, about corporate earnings at... Uh, a larger level and if i can ask farah because uh, back home we're talking about q2 earnings looking rather weak and perhaps that is what we are correlating as one of the fear factors that's building in that uh, consumption in india is kind of running low the economy is slowing down and perhaps that's what we're extrapolating but if you look at an overall global level at how earnings are panning out right now farah what's the sense that you're leaving us with is this a global phenomenon or is this something that we're experiencing just in india Actually, um, I think we need to also see how the markets usually expected to or what they expected to see from these reports, because somehow they're OK. We still need to see the Magnificent Seven Tesla was this, the, the first. So we still need to see more of the tech sector. But overall, um, the earnings are OK. It's just that the market always expected over the last uh, too many years, 20 years to have above expected or the forecast to come or the uh, numbers come better than the forecast. So somehow that's not being delivered right now. We have good uh, cash flows uh, for the bankings. They're really doing well, but uh, it's not coming way above expectation. And also the forecasts are not really super better than expected. And I think that's what's keeping the market from having a more bullish momentum. Yes, not uh, many would say, bad absolutely. Many would say that uh, back home in India as well, Ajay, may I not agree fully, but uh, perhaps our expectations of the equity markets have run ahead of uh, what the corporates have been able to uh, deliver by way of earnings. But that's room for another discussion, Ajay Bagga. And uh, Farah Murad, it's always a pleasure having you on India Tonight here on ET Now. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now.